My name is Antonia Yanakieva. I'm from the Medical University Sofia, Faculty of Public Health, full-time professor there. And um, uh, I don't know what kind of specialist I am because I have studied international management and the uh, Hochschule Karlsruhe, my bachelor degree. So we have been told that uh, we can make everything and we cannot do anything. So actually the managers and uh, the BBAs and the MBAs, they can manage, organize, coordinate, but actually they cannot do anything in depth. I hope I can do. So actually I, um, I think I'm an economist because I'm very good in numbers and um, accountants as well. So yeah. Um, good. Uh, in the university and in the faculty, I'm uh, head of the Department of Health Technology Assessment. Uh, but I'm teaching uh, mostly health management and health marketing, health technology assessment. And um, uh, me and my team, we launched a uh, um, few years ago a new master program. So um, this presentation will be a little bit different than the previous uh, presentations today. And uh, I hope you will find something uh, or topics uh, where we can collaborate on uh, within the Ingenium. So the topic is business involvement based learning in the clinical trials management master program. Um, I will start with this one, yeah. So I will start with a very short overview where I'm coming from. Uh, the Medical University Sofia is established in uh, 1917. It is the uh, first medical university in Bulgaria. And um, on this slide, you can see the structure. So we have four faculties. The first three faculties, um, they're very specific because they have only one master program. Faculty of Medicine, um, do you hear me well? I'm very sorry for the pronunciation. It's... Um, it's my adapter? Okay, so maybe we can change it. Can, can, can I use yours? Uh, it was not yours, okay. Um, Um, okay, so the second is the dental medicine. This is the, uh, another master program and another faculty, pharmacy. And I'm part of the faculty of uh, public health. We have also medical college. The difference between the faculty of public health and the medical college is actually in the degree. So here we have the professional bachelor, which is three years uh, long in Bulgaria and in the faculty is four years. Uh, four years and above the master programs. We have Center for Language Training, Physical Training and Sports, Central Medical Library, of course, and we have a branch in um, a small town close to Sofia named Vraca. Okay. So according to the accreditation system, uh, we are, uh, or the accreditation agency in Bulgaria, we are on the first places in uh, all five uh, scientific fields and educational fields, like medicine, pharmacy, dental medicine, public health, and healthcare. Um, and um, uh, according to the ranking system in uh, Bulgaria. So um, about the Faculty of Public Health, um, it is named uh, uh, Professor Tsekumir Vodenicharov because he's actually uh, the person who established this faculty. And uh, this faculty was established in 95 uh, with um, the help of the uh, World Health Organization, uh, with uh, the help of uh, uh, colleagues and uh, universities from France and other European, uh, European countries. And it was established as Faculty of uh, uh, Nursing. 2001, we renamed the uh, faculty in Faculty of Public Health. So we have been actually one of the first uh, countries. We uh, haven't been in that time uh, part of the European Union, member of the European Union. But we... Um, um, we um, 
we, we made, we renewed our program for nursing, for midwifery, uh, according to the uh, European requirements, namely uh, they become a full bachelor uh, professionals. So here are our departments. We have eight departments, health policy and management, social medicine, preventive medicine and disaster medicine, um, health economics, healthcare, the biggest department uh, which is responsible for educating the nurses, midwifery, physical aid, um, department of bioethics, department of occupational health, department of health technology assessment and uh, department of physiotherapy. Here are our bachelor and master programs. You can see, but um, uh, I will uh, keep short the presentation as possible. So um, I will go directly to the uh, clinical trials management. Uh, first, why is the clinical trials management as a program in the university so special? It is very rare. If you, if you want to uh, study clinical trials management, first you have to pay a lot of money. And secondly, it is a rare program because the, the professionals, the specialists who are teaching in this program or who should teach in this program have to, be, um, have to come uh, mostly from the field of clinical trials why they are not so uh, easy to acquire, because actually they're uh, earning a lot of money in, in these companies, in this field, and the academic area is not so attractive for them. So they have to be, uh, because I'm a marketing person, so they have to be on the fourth or five, fifth level on the Maslow uh, pyramid, yeah, to um, want to share their expertise, uh, with students, with, with uh, colleagues, etc. So, um, okay. I have, um, okay. Yeah, please. I'm sorry. So, this is something new. Uh, could you please answer? I have four questions. Uh, very simple. Um, above is the, uh, the um, a website menti.com. Uh, can you please answer on your phones? Uh, the first question, do you know what defines a clinical trial? The, uh, and, yeah, so you, you go to menti.com and use this code. It's eight numbers code, okay? Hmm? It's, wor it's working, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, one. <laughs> um. uh, ready? I have a second question. Have you ever participated in a clinical trial? So, yeah, it's <laughs> probably no. <laughs> Okay, I think we are ready. So, okay, yes. Yeah, ready? Yeah. Okay. 
Have you considered participating in a clinical trial as a way to access a new treatment or therapy? Okay, I think 13, 4 to 9. And the last question, do you know the potential benefits and risks of participating in a clinical trial? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. We'll go ahead. So, short information, or maybe not so short, about the clinical trials. The um, regulation institutions which are responsible for the clinical trials all over the world, but uh, especially in uh, Europe and in Bulgaria, of course, um, are the Ministry of Health, uh, according to the health law and the medicine law, uh, we have the Bulgarian Drug Agency and the European um, Agency for Medicine. We have different ethics committees because um, every uh, clinical trial has to get an approval for, the, uh, for um, starting the clinical trial in Europe and in the uh, member state. Uh, from the ethic committees. So it depends on the clinical trials, but uh, some of them um, are requiring or required is uh, are uh, more uh, approvals from different ethic committees. And we have the uh, Bulgarian Association of Clinical Research. So the Ministry of Health um, we have in Bulgaria a um, healthcare system which combines um, partly institutions from the past, um, before 89, and um, in the last 30, 35 years. So um, there are some, um, some national research centers which remain from the past um, and um, they are actually here, all of them are here. So they're responsible for the um, worst cases, let's say medical cases. And these are the uh, University uh, Hospital for Oncology. We have also University Hospital for Hematology. They are different, but they're in buildings which are uh, very close to each other, next to each other. We have a national hospital for cardiovascular disease, radiobiology, um, for rehabilitation, neurology, hygiene. We have an we have, um, institution which is part of the Ministry of Health, um, specialized for public health and for analyzing the data in the public health. And, uh, um, of course, the health information, uh, part of the statistic. Uh, National Stati Statistic Institute, okay? And the Bulgarian Association of uh, Clinical Research. So this association was established in 2003. It is uh, NGO and uh, the members are different, but uh, the major part of the members are actually institutions. They are private companies like companies uh, from the big pharma or other pharmaceutical industries and especially all the uh, institutions uh, which are working on clinical trials in Bulgaria. They are providing also um, individual membership but this is not so often. So the purpose are, um, you can see here on this slide, um, High um, they, they guarantee the high standard, standard in conducting clinical trials and adherence to the requirements of the Bulgarian and international standards because um, many of the clinical trials are coming from uh, companies 
uh, which are uh, from the United States. So um, they have to cover also the FDA uh, regulations. So not only the European, but the FDA regulations as well. Uh, so they guarantee the participation of the Bulgarian professionals in the procedures for pre preparation of regula regulatory documents, consist with international requirements and practice, and of course uh, they guarantee the choice of the Bulgarian patients to get accessible quality and safe, safe medications. Um, <clears throat> we started at 2018, this uh, was the first academic year, already six um, years, and we started the master program with 77 students. So it was a big challenge because after that we uh, get some um, restrictions uh, from the uh, Ministry of Health. They changed the, the educational law. It was uh, nothing to do with, uh, with this master program or any other, so they changed the law. And um, now we have between 20 and 35 students per year. But actually the number of the candidates is, um, is very big. And in general, uh, what can do the, um, the, the manager uh, or the, the graduate from the master program so they can uh, do the organizational management uh, on the um, highest level of the institution. Uh, they, can, they have control functions, economic functions, coordination, and of course, uh, the research. Here are the professional competencies uh, which, are, uh, which uh, are gained during the, um, the education. So very important is the uh, good clinical practice. Uh, for those who don't know uh, what is the clinical trial, this is actually the document uh, which is, uh, which, which is um, given as a requirement, as a standard, as a protocol from the FDA and from the European Agency uh, for Medicine. And uh, the people who are working in the clinical trials, um, they have to deal with this uh, good clinical practice because after that, if the, the trial is uh, not done according to, to the GCP, actually uh, they cannot get the approval uh, for the medicine. So you can imagine uh, for um, how much money um, is um, we are talking about, yeah. So hundreds of millions or sometimes four billion or more. So um, they, can knowledge, uh, they can knowledge skills and competencies in uh, clinical trials administration uh, development and design of a comprehensive clinical trial protocol from the development phase and uh, through the research and uh, till the end uh, when actually the phase three is um, finished. Also skills and competencies for communication with patients. This is something very important because um, many of the clinical trials are uh, going too long and this is a problem for the for the patients who has who have uh, uh, who have not access to a medicine for their special disease i will give you uh, after that a very good example of that so the communication with patients is um, we have two or three courses during the master program um, it is very specific because important is not only to attract the, the patient, I, I use this word, maybe it is not the right one, but, but to involve the patient in the clinical trial, but also that this patient remain in the clinical trial till the end because if he or she... Um, does not, doesn't do it, um, the, the data will be not part of, of this clinical trial. And we are talking here about um, a very big number of patients uh, which we need 
to, to get the approval from the agencies. So communication, very important. Legal and bioethics rules in the clinical trials. Um, legal, okay, this is clear, but the uh, ethics and the bioethics, um, very important for patients with um, oncology diseases, hematology diseases, because, um, uh, or other diseases um, as well, because uh, we are trying to uh, give, or the let's say the, the pharma industry try to give treatment to patients who has not uh, the chance uh, to live without this treatment, without this therapy. Uh, monitoring and audit of clinical trials, of course, and marketing of clinical trials and medicinal products. Here are the job opportunities. Um, I mentioned some of them, so they can uh, work in the project management, in the like investigators or like principal investigators, like clinical research associates, uh, quality assurance or quality control, and like consultant, consultants and experts in management and administrative uh, structures. Of course, um, they can they can work as. Um, other professionals. We have uh, the requirement that uh, uh, in every hospital, which is a site, uh, they have to um, um, employ employed, um, uh, a legal representative, um, a lawyer, who has um, actually um, expertise in uh, clinical trials. So how we are involving, involving the business in this master program? Um, this is not a new method. I'm sure that you are um, uh, very uh, good in that, your countries and your universities. We as a country are not really um, the best uh, example for that. But in this master program, um, we uh, tried and uh, uh, we are very successful in this. So we have the business and uh, uh, they, are, they are teaching in our program. And uh, they are um, doing their labs also with the students, which is uh, for, for them very, very uh, valuable like knowledge and uh, expertise. So we are integrate, integrating the real world industry practices into the curriculum every year. Uh, the good thing is um, I started with the structure of the university because I'm coming from, the, from a university uh, with, uh, with programs which are uh, very, very uh, strictly uh, coordinated by the state, like medicine, pharmacy, etc. So we cannot do anything there, no changes. Um, but in the Faculty of Public Health, we are, we are very flexible. And actually, the Ingenium project is, um, we are uh, participating very active here because the new uh, double degrees or whatever, every new course, uh, we can implement in our programs. And um, we, can, uh, we can renew our master program every year. This is uh, legal and, uh, and we are doing it because in the clinical trials, um, every day or every month are coming new things and they have to be implemented in the program. Inclusion of practitioners in the teaching process um, and annual improvement of the curriculum, I talked about it. We have, of course, alumni club. Teaching staff. We have the professors in the university, but uh, what I uh, really insisted in the beginning of the program is that we include um, professors from all the medical universities in the country. So it was also a marketing decision, let's say, and management decision, but um, we have um, colleagues from the other three medical universities in uh, Bulgaria included teaching in this program. We have the business owners, really the business owners of uh, companies which are, uh, uh, which are active in the, in the clinical trials. 
uh, on national and international level. We have um, the pharmaceutical companies on national and international level, uh, the contract uh, research organizations, we have the hospitals, and we have, um, especially here from the regulatory agencies, we have um, the Agency for Medicine uh, in Bulgaria, always the director is here, actually, um, many of the ex-directors also are teaching in the program and um, from the hospitals. There is a question, I think. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, uh, since uh, you are an expert in the field, uh, so if you think about in a project management point of view, so that uh, your students in your master's program, they participate in this kind of, let's say, a uh, new uh, clinical trial of certain medicine, so, uh, what is in the industry the like the length of uh, getting the new uh, product in the market? How long does it take? The, uh, that it's a good uh, job, I guess, to work for I don't know five to ten years uh, in the same project. If if the master students are in the project management, but how it is, you have more understanding of it. So you mean actually how long does a patient can stay in the in no, clinical no, no. trial a new, or a new, what? new treatment coming into the market, as you said, the new new treatment. Some How kind. long does it take? Yeah, to the, the process, the, uh, the regulation process, etc. I can, so. yeah, I understand, but I cannot give you an answer because actually there is a phase uh, which is from the research and development phase. Yeah, so you have there uh, some kind of molecule, and uh, they're starting to. Um, work on that and um, very um, actually very important uh, is when the company will decide uh, to get the to, to pay for the patent to um, to apply for the patent because when the company apply for the patent the pharmaceutical company from this period you can count 10 years when this patent is active. So after these 10 years, the other pharmaceutical companies can produce and sell the same medicine. But um, according to the, um, uh, to the clinical trial, uh, trials uh, phases and uh, periods, it's, um, you cannot say when um, or how long does it take because there are um, there are clinical trials um, for which you need many years because of the low number of participants. So if you have rare diseases, you have very, very low number of participants. So you cannot say you need one year, we need five years. Of course, the pharmaceutical company, the, the, the sponsor, actually is um, always rushing the process. But Unfortunately, that's, yes. why, that's why we have here the contract research organizations. So it is not allowed that the pharmaceutical company, the big pharma, um, made themselves the clinical trials. They, they are not allowed. So they can, uh, they can uh, leave another company, do the clinical trials for them. Exactly because of the uh, of the data and because of the um, the real data, let's say, because yeah, you have the re reliability of the data. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So we have here. Um, so our students are visiting the companies and the sites. Um, they're working on case studies. They're coming from the uh, medical part of view. They're coming from the management um, or regulatory agencies, regulatory compliance. They're coming also from the Association from, for Clinical Research on budgeting, project management. And we have also the master thesis. And um, during the master thesis, uh, they have to uh, work with their mentors on uh, research, which they have after that uh, to publish. And um, this is uh, one of the last um, published 
um, scientific work, scientific papers uh, in a very good uh, journal, scientific journal. And of course, we have the uh, innovative data management system approach in the drug storage at the uh, clinical research organization branches, which is very important because uh, normally you cannot enter these uh, facilities. <laughs> so you, know, you have to sign um, a couple of documents, uh, but uh, uh, our students are uh, going there and see uh, what is happening there, why it is constructed like this, and um, uh, what are the, the uh, requirements uh, to how to keep the data, the information of uh, the patients. And of course, uh, they can visit and communicate with the uh, patients involved in clinical trials in the medical facilities. Okay, do you have any other questions? I have two cases for you to present. Um, they're very specific, so um, if I not use the right terminology, I'm really sorry, but they're really medical, really medical. So I will try to be uh, very, um, very clear and to, to use the right words. So I have something here. <laughs> okay, uh, the first case uh, is named from key alterations to clinical trials because um, uh, this is a true story. We have a patient with a triple negative poorly differentiated G3 ductal carcinoma of the left breast. So this is the most aggressive breast cancer. Least treatment, al tre treatment alternatives, um, especially no alternatives actually. And the mortality is a matter of months here. So it is really very, very aggressive. Um, there is one way, uh, if we find um, a mutation within this, um, this carcinoma, uh, this one, the PIK3CA, okay? The, the patient has uh, to make um, a genetic, a specific genetic test, which is very expensive, but she paid for that, and uh, here are the results. So actually, um, and the additional uh, biomarkers. So at the end, the good thing is that we have here the uh, biomarker for the PIK3CA. So she's positive to a treatment which is now in a clinical trial. So there is no treatment at all, but there is one which is still in, the cl in a clinical trial. So we looked for this clinical trial and where are the sites, in which countries are the sites uh, where she can join this clinical trial. So you can see actually the countries here. The bad news for her was that there is no clinical trial for especially this treatment in Bulgaria. But there was one in Romania, here, you can see. So what, what we do, um, we contacted this site and um, the lady is here and she is undergoing the treatment uh, for this breast cancer. So we hope it will be successful uh, because it will be good not only for her but actually for the whole clinical trial. Yeah. Okay, so this is one example what, uh, what we can do um, for patients um, and what we can do if there is no site in the country. We can, uh, we can find another site in the uh, European Union. So, one example. The second example is about the validation method. The sponsor was uh, from uh, Singapore, and um, 
we was looking, or he was looking, the sponsor for an early marker of potential cancer for lung, um, colon, and breast cancer. So actually, students, alumni members, and one teacher joined this validation study, um, which is based on uh, seven uh, blood uh, protein markers. The good thing for this method is that um, actually, if you want to make it, it's, it's at afford affordable price, so it's not expensive. Uh, uh, you can do it. And the results from these seven markers, they're undergoing um, an artificial intelligence software. So this software can calculate uh, the result and uh, give you information. Here are the results and the reference ranges. And this is how the result looks like. So good that our teacher is in that part of, uh, <laughs> of this, so it's low cancer risk. Uh, we have here the medium cancer and of course here the high cancer risk. So actually um, this is um, an examination uh, which is um, good to know or for, for the person who is undergoing this, um, this examination is uh, good to know because uh, he will be um, more, let's say, um, he will go uh, often to, uh, to, to, to the physicians and uh, hopefully it will not be too late because um, in the healthcare, um, the, the biggest, uh, let's say, problem for my country, for instance, is that the, the people are not going to the physician, so um, if they get the cancer, it is in the third or fourth stage, so it's actually uh, not so much to do, okay? So here I have two slides with all what are the students thinking about the master program. Um, I will not read it if you want. <laughs> okay. And another one. So, um, I would like to ask you, uh, it will be my last slide um, now, to go again to the menti.com and to answer this question. Okay, maybe two more, but there is no, no. <laughs> what is really great. Um, yeah, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I can speak more about it, but there is no time. So if you have any questions, um, I'm here. And uh, if you want to collaborate in this area especially or others, we are open. So, uh, as I said, we are very flexible because everything uh, reflects the health. Okay, thanks.